Sign there, Mr. Wilson. Are you positive you can't identify any of the rustlers that shot you? Never got close enough. They were all strangers to me. Well, it's not much to go on. But don't you worry. You'll get your cattle back. Or you'll get our check in full settlement after the customary three days. Thank you, Mr. Hackett. I'm certainly glad I insured with your cattle. That's our business. We always back up our policy. Good day. Good day. Another claim? Yes. Wilson lost 24 head yesterday. Gentlemen, between paying off cattle claims and keeping up the orphanage, you can plainly see why our reserve fund is so low. However, after today, you no longer have to contribute to the orphanage. As you all know, you... The orphanage must be kept open. Mr. Clark's will provide that the proceeds of this company will be used entirely for the support of that institution. Miss Moore, you know that's impossible. I have no control over the cattle raids. If you knew how to run the company, it would never reach this stage. It's very trying to have a woman at a business conference. This meeting today is for the board to approve my order regarding the public adoption of the children this afternoon. We'll be far better off in the homes of kindly couples. Kindly couples? You mean people who find it cheaper to adopt children than hire servants? We won't discuss the matter any further, Miss Moore. The orphanage closes today. That's final. That orphanage was old Sam Clark's pet idea, Hackett. He'd turn over in his grave if he knew it was being closed. My decision stands. Gentlemen, are you agreed? Then the meeting is adjourned. You had no right to call the meeting of directors, Mr. Hackett, without the sanction of the three musketeers, trustees for the Clark estate. No vote is legal without them being present. Don't worry, Miss Moore. I'll take the responsibility of handling them. Kinda looks like your police force falling down on the job. They ought to be out after them rustlers. Well, I'm starting them out on the trail immediately, Mr. Morris. If they don't get the rustlers this time, there'll be a big shake-up in the department. Well, I hope they don't. Good day. Good night. Glad you came around. Captain Gardner? Yes, come into my office. That was a pretty good speech you made about the shake-up, boss. Six hundred and ninety dollars is a lot of money to lose in one day, Hackett. Any trace of the rustlers? There'd better not be. Get rid of the cattle in the usual manner. Right. And with the orphanage closing today, things ought to come to a head pretty sudden. I'll have control of this company in less than two weeks. And when that happens, we'll put a stop to the rustling quick enough. But I've got to make an example of somebody. Round me up a couple of rustlers. Oh, uh, any uh, particular type? No, use your own judgment. Yes, sir. Doctor ordered. Yeah. Now, if they want any shooting, let them have country. The ad is up. Surely, stranger. None of your lips. You know what you're wanted for. Get off your horses. Keep 
big war chief off the reservation. Hey, what's his blanket mean? Range police officers. Officers, my eye. We know a jazz band uniform. We spot one, don't we, Lullaby? Hey, mister, settle a bet. Do you work for a local funeral parlor? Yeah, I bury clowns like you. Get their guns, Canary. Got you that time. Cut the comedy or I'll let you have it. Now, where's the rest of your outfit? Shall we tell them? Well, what do you think? I don't know. Reckon it's proper? Maybe not. They wouldn't understand anyway. They're too dumb. Yeah, but on the other hand, what have we got to lose? That's right. I reckon we're better. Well, you tell him, Tucson. The rest of our outfit is on the pack horse. You're a smart guy, ain't you? Where'd you? Whoa, Stoney. Your hobble's loose again. He's a little hot-tempered. As for me, I wait my time. Now, what's the idea of this stick-up? I'll ask the questions. Where's that bunch of steers? What steers? So you don't know anything about them, eh? Well, the Cattlemen's Protective Association does. You're going in town to recover your memories. <laughs> <laughs> protective association. <laughs> now you fellas got us all wrong. Not so you could notice it. We know crooks when we see them. I tell you, you're making a mistake. Shut up. Get on your horses. Well, here they come. I've got prisoners. The three musketeers. So what? Stick around and you'll find out. All right, come on, get in. Some rustlers. Rustlers? Well, you long-eared idiot. These men are the trustees of the Clark Estate. They control the majority stock of the company you're working for. How was I to know? The same way I did. There they are with Mr. Clark. That's me on the end. No, oh, wait a minute. I'm wrong. That's my horse. A thousand apologies, gentlemen. Now, if there's anything I can do... Oh, that's all right. We all make mistakes. It was a terrible mistake. But you see, we've been having rustler trouble, and the boys wanted to show results. I'm awfully sorry. Won't you sit down? No, pardon me. <laughs> hey, Mr. Hackett, uh, what condition is the company in? Well, I'm happy to say, Mr. Brooks, that it will be all right. We're closing the orphanage this afternoon. You're doing what? We're closing the orphanage. You see, we've had unusually heavy losses this year, and I thought it best if the orphans were placed in suitable homes. Oh, you did. Come on, fellas, we're heading for the orphanage. We'll talk to you later. I hope there's no hard feelings, boys. Forget it. Tucson, what's holding you back? They're heading for the orphanage. Trail them and report back to me. Your work. And big farewell to all. 
I'm so glad it's all over. That's all right, Janet. You did fine. I don't feel like singing. Can you wash dishes and iron? I can wash dishes, but you can't iron, I suppose. That's just it. You teach these children everything in these orphan asylums that the things they ought to know. Shall we take a Hiram? Well, it's up to you. I don't want a kid that'll be sick all the time, not able to work. Have you got a girl that's older than this one? She looks kind of puny and underpaid. Well, why don't you hire a servant if you want one, Mrs. Perkins? Janet isn't puny and she isn't underfed. She's a healthy, sweet child who would bring happiness into any family that appreciated her. But you're like all the rest of the people that come here to adopt children. You just want them for slaves. I've never been so insulted in all my life. You couldn't be insulted. Miss Jones. <laughs> Will you take charge for a little while? Certainly. Please don't feel bad, Miss Doris. It ain't your fault. Thank you, Bobby. Maybe if I'm bad enough, nobody will adopt me. Then I'll get a good job someplace and you can keep house for me. That'll be fine, Bobby. There he is in the patio with Miss Moore. Bobby! Kind of looks like that housekeeping idea's off. Mr. Rankin here wants to talk with Bobby. He's interested in adopting him. Yeah, I want to look him over, find out if he's the kind of boy I want. Bobby, answer all the gentlemen's questions. Oh, all right. Is he healthy? Does he eat much? He's perfectly healthy and eats as much as a normal child should. Stick out your tongue. Bobby, that wasn't nice. Well, he wanted to see my tongue, didn't he? Well, I guess you ain't got nothing wrong with you. Can you cut wood? No, can you? How often do you take a bath? Do you brush your teeth every morning? Do you know the Lord's Prayer? Do you go to church every Sunday morning? Well, now, look at here, young fellow. And how much is seven times six? You can see for yourself. He won't do. Come out here, you. Putting in the other people's business is a bad habit, stranger. Well, I'm going to cause accidents. Yeah, well, this happens to be our business. What's this fella chasing you for, son? Oh, he wants to adopt me and I don't like it. I don't blame you. We're the trustees for the Clark Estate, and the adoptions are all off. Now get going. Well, I come all the way over here from Raw, huh? We don't care okay where you came from, Beta. Say, ain't you the three mosquitoes? Uh, something like that, son. <laughs> you couldn't have arrived at a more opportune time. I'm Doris Moore, superintendent in charge of the orphanage. Well, glad to know you. I'm uh, Stony Brook. This is Tucson Smith, Lullaby Joslin, my assistant. <laughs> Say, let's run the rest of these slave buyers out of here. Right. I'm sorry, folks, but all adoption proceedings for the day have been canceled. You can't cancel the adoption now. It's a tough race. After letting us come all the way over As here. As the in charge of the uh, orphanage, we've decided to keep the place open. Now, if any of you have any complaints to make, take them up with Mr. Joslin here. Well, I come over to adopt a couple of kids, and I ain't leaving without them. I'll see what the law has to say about this. Beat it. Vamos. That. Have you made arrangements to finance the running of the orphanage, Mr. Brooks? No, we haven't, but it's going to stay open. From now on, we're running the clock stick to suit ourselves. Look at this! Look at it, Brown! Where'd you get it? I got it. What's the I don't know. Thank you. Yeah.
careful there, young and Elmer's kind of touchy sometimes. Is his name Elmer? Yeah, and he's the smartest kid you ever saw. <laughs> Yesterday, Wilson's herd was raided, and as usual, the rustlers got away. Hackett claims to have paid out over $60,000 insurance losses since Mr. Clark's death. Naturally, then, they haven't any funds left for the orphanage. Well, it's going to stay open. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid it's no use, boys. The state officials notified me they will close us down Saturday, unless we show we are financially reliable. Saturday? That gives us three days to get the money. Well, don't worry, we'll get it. Come on, Lullaby, we're riding. So long, kids. Bye! Bye. Help to you boys? Yes, you can. We're going after the Wilson stock. We'll try and pick up the trail. Right. Look at 
all the dead and wounded. Yeah, must have been all shooting cat pistols. After that brave stand of Captain Garden and his men, I think we know who's in back of the deal to break the association. Yeah, let's drive that herd back to Wilson and do a little house cleaning. Musketeers got away with the Wilson herd. What about our men? I framed it so they got away after following them to throw off suspicion. Well, that ought to put us in the clear. I'm not so sure about that. Those three fellows are plenty smart. From now on, we're going to be under suspicion. Sim! Yes, sir? Call a meeting of the board of directors for tomorrow. Just a minute, Sims. From now on, we're giving the orders. Forget that board of directors meeting. Yes, sir. How come get out, Hackett? You're through. Well, I don't understand. We're running this business without your help. Well, I'm the general manager, and it'll take a vote of the board of directors to put me out. All right, then. We'll call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 You're out. Get their guns, boys. They belong to the company. After 13 cattle raids, you didn't recover a single head. You paid out $60,000 insurance losses. Hackett, you're either a fool or a crook. And when I get through these books, I'll know the answer. Now get out. Well, then you go too, Sims. Sorry. I get my things. At least our friend Hackett will be out in the open from now on, Stoney. That's just what we want. Hey, Stoney, what you make of this? Found it in one of these here uniforms. Carson. Isn't there a rancher by the name of Carson in this district? Yeah. He's one of the association's biggest clients. He's been insured with Clark for years. The loss of Carson's herd would bust the Cattlemen's Protective Association flat, and Hackett knows it. We've got to beat him to the punch. This time we'll do a little ambushing ourselves. Well, hello, Doris. What are you and Bobby doing in town? I'm trying every way possible to bring money, Stoney. I've arranged to put on a children's show in the town hall tomorrow afternoon. And we're heading to kitties today. That's the idea. Put us on the bill. We'll help. Thank you. Tucson, there's a fan dang. Oh, <laughs> don't pay any attention to him. He's a little pixelated. Look, don't you think we'd better be going? We've got a little business to tend to. I haven't gone on any shop yet. Not today, Bobby. We're liable to tangle with cattle rustlers. <laughs> Mr. Hackett, 
Three trustees found an open gardener's uniform, and I think their wives to the castle ready. You fool. Maybe it's a good thing they found that note. Go to the ranch and get sidearms. Cut through the pass and hit them before they reach Carson's. And when you wash them up, you can drive the herd off. That's thinking, boss. Started shooting before we recognized them. Well, where'd they go to? Hit hit on them, did ya? No. They all got away without a scratch. But we're going after the real rustlers now. Do you want to go along? Jiminy Christmas! They got him. We could have drowned for all he cared. Shucks, sure, I seen you coming out of the river and I know you was okay. <laughs> sure. Get into your clothes, Alibi. Say, they didn't get Carson's herd of cattle after all, which is something. They know I nicked one of them. Keep a lookout for a bird with a bum wrist. You did. Say, now we got something to work on. And we'd have had all three of them bottled up tight if it hadn't been for that brat Bobby. What'd you do with him? No, I sent him back to the office. Young jackass, what'd you let him get away for? I'm going to the office. I'll be back later on. Why, hello, my little man. I'm not your little man. <laughs> Where is everybody, Bobby? I think they're at town at the opera house rehearsing for tomorrow's show. Well, I've got some good news for you. I'm going to adopt you. Well, I don't want to be adopted. I like it here. That's enough, Bobby. Come on with me. I don't want to get you. Let me get home, Bobby. Ah, you'll be all right. Leave that ball alone, Hackett. I'm adopting you. You're too late. I adopted this youngster myself yesterday. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm taking him home with me. Move aside. 
You're not taking this kid nowhere. Move or I'll give it to you. Drop that gun and don't move. Don't turn. Now you can turn. I forgot to tell you, Hackett, that I was a ventriloquist. What's up? Oh, Hackett here is trying to dump Bobby. Hackett, your being here saved us from going after you. We've gone over the company books and now we know you're a crook. Unless you return those stolen funds by tomorrow night, we're coming after you. I don't bluff easily. Bobby, what were you doing today that Hackett wanted to adopt you so sudden like? Nothing much. See, I was only out trying to help you catch those cattle rustlers. Is that where you ran into Hackett? No. Only saw Captain Gordon. Were any of the police with him? Well, I ain't supposed to talk. Why not? Well, because I promised Captain Gordon I would. There's your answer. Let's get him. Wait a minute. We gotta use our heads. Hackett's the man we gotta break down. Yeah. Say, hey, Tony, I didn't know you went over the books. I didn't. But if Hackett thinks I did, it'll force him out in the open before tomorrow night. Thanks to you, Gardner. Bobby kicked the musketeers off. Well, what are we going to do? We're all going to attend that show tomorrow afternoon. How do you do? Good afternoon, folks. Oh, <laughs> glad to get out of the show.
with a heart of gold. How many? Six. Afternoon, Hackett. Afternoon, Gardner. Glad to see you doing your bit for charity. Get 
next act in our program is Lullaby Jocelyn and his younger son, Elmer. Well, Elmer, how do you feel? Fine. Say, what is this? This is the opera house. What do you think of it? Tastes so hot. Kind of smells bad in places. Especially back there where Mr. Hackett is. <laughs> Elmer, that's not nice. Don't you realize that Mr. Hackett is one of the biggest executives in this town? Is that so? You don't even know what an executive is. Oh, no. An executive is a man that loses other people's money, like Mr. Hackett. <laughs> Elmer's pretty smart. <laughs> he sure knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Listen, Elmer, forget about Mr. Hackett. How's all your family? Well, they're all well except my mother-in-law. And she had a terrible accident. Oh, your mother-in-law had a terrible accident? Yeah. Well, how did it happen? Well, my mother-in-law come to my house to stay about three months, see? Yeah. She gets as hale and hearty as she ever was for her life. Just as hale and hearty as she ever was for her life. Yeah. She wanted to go home, put her in a car to take her to the station. Yeah. She just as hale and hearty as she ever was for in her life. Is that so? Go down to the station, she went to the waiting room to get a ticket. She's standing around just as hale and hearty as she ever was for in her life. Is that so? Went out on the platform, and you could hear the train. She's standing around on the platform just as hale and hearty as she ever was for in her life. Train pulled in. She started to step up on the step. And, oh, I can't tell it. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's awful. I know what you're going to say. I know you're going to say it. Your mother-in-law started to step up on the step, slipped, fell out of the train. The train ran over and killed your mother-in-law. No, it was worse than that, Lola died. Worse than that? Worse than that? Well, what in the world could be worse than the train running over your mother-in-law and killing her? train pulled out and left her standing there just as hale and hearty as she ever was for in her life. <laughs> the other two will be showing up in a minute. Doris, make sure all the children are out of the theater before I finish my act, won't you? You will be careful, won't you, Stoney? We need you. We? Well, I do, then. Da, 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 da. I'll get the kids to fall for it. All right. Yeah, it's a nice tune. <laughs> Look, Tucson, this is a showdown. We've got to force some information out of Canary or we're sunk. So is the orphanage. Everything you got, Stoney. Right. great pleasure to present to you the metal marvel of the age in his world-renowned exhibition of supernatural powers. He can tell you your past, your present, and your future. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Swami, Stony Brook. Come on, children, hurry. Stoney will demonstrate his remarkable mystic powers on any subject I will select. While the spotlight is on this subject, Swami, concentrate deeply and tell us if you can see into this man's past. This man's past is very clear to me. I see an accident, an injury, an injury to the right hand, I believe. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Can you see any more of the gentleman's past? I can. I see him start out in life an ambitious boy. But his trail leads downhill. He meets the wrong kind of men. I see them getting him into trouble. I see him forced to lie, to steal. And I see his future. I see him with his hands tied behind him. A guard on each side. Walking up a flight of 13 steps to a platform where a rope is waiting. It looks like a noose. A hangman's noose. Oh, no! Yes. And 
With that rope around his neck, he tries to save his soul from everlasting torment. Why should you alone pay for the crimes others have forced you to commit? You've only one chance. Save yourself before it's too late. Speak. Speak now. He made me do it. <laughs> Two birds a lot of good. I suppose I should visit the orphanage a couple of times a week just to sort of see how things are going. I really think you should. Of course, I can only make it at night, especially moonlight nights. 
So you're going to watch after the orphans on moonlight nights, eh? Well, I have to come over once in a while, sort of check up on the place. Sure. Hey, that's my job. I'm only interested in little orphans. <laughs> hey, Lala, boy, you ain't going to forget to take me along with you, are you? Lala, die's taking you nowhere. <laughs> Didn't you say you were going to adopt me? I did say something like that. Not by a jug full. Two dummies in the family are enough. <laughs> Elmer's only kidding. You're going right along with me. Thank <laughs> you. 